What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I made another version of sashimi pasta. So it was probably what like two months ago I want to say that I did salmon sashimi and I called it fettuccine because it just sounded good. And I did it with like a spicy mayo, so I called it creamy sashimi fettuccine. I mean, it's really good, I know. So when I did those, I just did them plain. I put some sesame seeds on top, but it was like just fish and sauce. And I'm not gonna lie, I love sashimi, but I was kind of like, wish I had a veg, wish I had some rice. So today I went to Coastal Seafoods, they have an amazing new space. Like they had actually a pretty small space before. That's where I get all of my sashimi grade fish and most of my seafood from. I picked up some yellowtail snapper and then I went next door to United Noodle, which is like this amazing Asian grocery store. And I picked up some Korean chili paste and I already had some kimchi that I gotten from another Korean supermarket. So anyways, you saw, I mixed the chili paste with chili garlic sauce, togarashi oil, rice vinegar, and a little bit of monk fruit. I just mixed all of those things together to create a spicy Korean sauce. Cut the yellowtail snapper into as long a strips as I could, but full disclosure, it did not work as well as the salmon did the last time. And I feel like tuna would even work better. Like it just holds together a little bit better. Hamachi yellowtail is definitely not a fish that holds well together and I guess I didn't realize that until today. We've got the sauce, we've got the kimchi in there. I added some sesame seeds on top which kind of reminded me of parmesan cheese. And I really wanted to do crispy rice and so I decided to make crispy rice meatballs in the air fryer and it was literally like I would just went to a local sushi place and asked for a side of rice and I just like formed the sushi rice into balls P.S. When you do that, definitely have your hands wet, otherwise the sushi rice sticks all over you. Form them into balls, put them in the air fryer at 400, but I think I'd do 375 next time for about 12 to 15 minutes. And you wanna open it up every so often and turn them. And prior to putting them in, I sprayed all of them with coconut oil so that they would get nice and brown. Even though they got a little too brown in my opinion. Yay, some of them are long. You know, I just kind of threw this sauce together, didn't really measure anything. I just, yeah, put some things in the bowl, mixed it around. Don't have any idea how spicy this is. Really hope I don't die. Let's do this. That sauce is amazing, first of all. The fish, again, it feels way less firm than the salmon. So I suppose less of an al dente pasta. The sauce has this amazing spicy but sweet flavor. I'm so glad that I added a little bit of the rice wine vinegar because it just kind of lifted it just a little bit. And also real glad that I got a level two spicy. They had level one, two, three, and four. And I didn't think they had a level two. It was like one, three, or four. And I was like, one, I don't want to do one. But three, I was like legitimately scared of. This is perfect for me. And actually I could use probably a tiny bit more, but I'm, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to press my luck. Mm. Mm. 
This is a really good combination. The last sashimi pasta was definitely lacking in the interesting texture department. The different crunch from the kimchi to the crispy rice. I love the texture of the fish. It's still like it's firm enough And this kimchi, I've had it forever. I just finished it, so now I have to go like go buy another one. I'll probably just get it at United Noodle next time I'm by Coastal. Mm hmm. This, the mung fruit, I'm just kind of like shocked by. Because this is definitely needed. A little something sweet, just to round it out. I should have cut farther down in the scallions. Oh my gosh. I freaking love the white parts. They're so sharp and a little spicy. And it just kind of goes with the whole cat's toy. Just went meep meep and then nothing. The rice by itself is so good and it was a little harder obviously to keep them in a round shape since it's sitting on something flat but if you were to make traditional crispy rice in the air fryer it'd be so much easier because you just have to form it again with wet hands just form it into like a rectangular block more or less round out the corners and then spray it all put it in there. And then you have like a like a designated place to turn it too. Like you every few minutes you could just flip it. I think it would turn out amazing. I actually like need to do that. And I love the idea 
like it's way cheaper to just buy a bag of sushi rice and to make it at home but in a pinch or just like if you don't feel like it sushi restaurants will sell you just sushi rice a huge time saver oh my goodness baby what are you doing oh you're just so cute oh yeah <laughs> Oh. It's kind of like sashimi salad that I've had at a few places. Where they just mix pieces of sashimi with other stuff. Sure, this is mostly sashimi. But still. Hundred percent though, you have to use salmon instead. Don't use yellowtail. I love yellowtail. This is not the right application for it. So if you're gonna make these crispy rices at home, which you totally should, and if you don't have an air fryer, you like you need one. It's just like the best appliance ever. Making spicy tuna or spicy salmon is just so, so easy to go on top of it. You just have to finely mince whatever fish. If you're in the Twin Cities, Coastal has tuna and salmon and other fish that's sashimi grade like this. And you just mix it with like sriracha, togarashi oil, Japanese mayo. Japanese mayo is essential. You can even switch it up and use this chili paste, the gochujang. Mix that with the kewpie mayo, some togarashi oil, and do a spicy tuna, spicy salmon situation with that. A little soy sauce. Super easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm
Oh my gosh, that was so good. I'm so pleasantly surprised. I was really, really concerned that this was gonna be way too spicy and that I was just an insane person for scooping chili pepper paste like that. But no, it's actually surprisingly sweet. Really, really well balanced for winging it. I'm sorry I don't have any measurements for you. We're just gonna have to eyeball it based on the video. That's all that I added is what you saw in the video. I honestly totally forgot to add salt, but the sauces were kind of salty, so it didn't matter all that much. But yeah, I'm really excited because I've wanted to make tteokbokki. Really not sure if I'm saying that right. But the uh, spicy Korean rice cakes. I wanted to make giant ones and I wasn't sure about the sauce. But now that I found the chili pepper paste, I feel super confident and the spice level is good. I just want to make like this huge tteokbokki situation. Mozzarella cheese, ramen, the works. So stay tuned for that. It might be like a few weeks or so, maybe a month. I don't know, but not too, too long. All right, guys, I am actually feeling pretty good right now. I had some donuts earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. It is always nice to see you, to hang out with you, to share recipes with you. Comment below what you thought about this sashimi pasta. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.